Okay, does this look like fifth grade math to you? And uh, the obvious answer is no. Uh, pretty sure uh, maybe very, very few fifth graders are learning things like this because this is definitely algebra. So, you know, the topic of this video is how I would explain algebra to a fifth grader. Well, it actually turns out that at the fifth grade, you've been already learned algebra, basic concepts of algebra. We just don't really kind of realize it. So even at the first grade level, you've been learning algebraic concepts. So I'm going to obviously explain uh, those concepts in this video and how I would explain algebra to someone, let's say, in the fifth grade. Now, um, a couple things to keep in mind if you're kind of thinking, wow, fifth grade, that's pretty young. You know, maybe this is too advanced for a fifth grader. Well, again, keep in mind that um, in uh, many schools, uh, students can start taking pre-algebra at the sixth grade. So really, you know, you're learning algebra. You know, I don't want, I guess I'm trying to um, demystify this algebra word, right? You know, when people say math or arithmetic, they think of one thing. And when, as soon as you say algebra, or you show something like this, where there's a bunch of letters and all kinds of stuff, you know, people get scared. My um, goal with this video is to say, listen, I'm going to explain this as if I would explain this to a fifth grader. Anyone can understand algebra. So we're going to go ahead and introduce the basic concepts of algebra in this video. But uh, before we get going, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. And you guessed it, I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online video-based math programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can find the um, link to my math program in the description of this video. But um, I offer full courses. And so obviously, if you need to take a course, you can take a course with me. Or um, if you're taking a course, my program can assist you to get through. So in all, all my uh, products, I have complete, full, comprehensive lessons, way more than what I do on YouTube. And I literally show you how to solve thousands of problems. So very, very powerful. It's taken me years to develop. Again, if you want to check that out, you can follow the link in the description in this video. Now, uh, irrespective of where you're at in mathematics, okay, uh, you need to understand this rule. And this is the kind of the golden rule in math that I've kind of learned over decades of being a math teacher, is those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades. And the reverse is true. Those students who struggle in mathematics, typically we say, hey, where's your math notes? They're like, well, what do you mean? You know, I'd say either their notes are sloppy, they have no notes, whatever the case might be. This was me way back in elementary, middle school, and in high school. Uh, so listen, I'm not trying to pick on you. However, if you're not taking good notes, you need to correct that. Okay, you need to improve your note taking. It's absolutely critical. But in the meantime, you need something to learn from. So I actually offer very detailed, comprehensive notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into this algebra concept. Uh, how I would explain algebra uh, to a fifth grader, right? All right, so let's go back to uh, uh, memory lane, okay? And let's think about these problems like this, okay? So when you were in the first grade, and that was such a cool grade to be in, or second grade, or whatever the case is, uh, for me, just to kind of uh, let you know, that was the early 1970s for me. And those were the good old days because, yeah, even the teachers, the teachers were in there smoking in the classroom. We would do all kinds of uh, dangerous things like ride tricycles and fall down. <laughs> it, was, it was a good time. But I do remember these kind of problems. You'd sit there, the teacher would give you this, and they'd give you this gigantic pencil, you know, something like that, right? And all this big paper with all these like dotted lines like so. It was totally cool. But uh, anyways, you would get a problem like this, right? And... A teacher would be like, okay, fill in the blank. All right, so let's take this problem right here. And you're like trying to figure out, you know, in your young brain, you're like, hmm, what number goes in here to make this true, right? So you would think about it. And maybe you're in your brain, you'd be like, hmm, what number goes in a box? Would it be a one? And let's see if you would be like, well, let's see. If it was one, it would be one plus three, and that's equal to four. So, no, that's not the answer. So then you would go, hmm, how about two? 
We put a little 2 in that box, mentally speaking, right? And you'd go 2 plus 3. Hey, that equals to 5. So you'll be like, hey, that's a 2. And you would go ahead and write the 2 in here. And then, of course, you'd be happy. Your teacher would give you a bunch of stars. And it was just awesome, right? So anyways, this right here is effectively algebra. Okay, now you would be like, what are you talking about? Yes, indeed, this is algebra. Because this little box here is a symbol. It's representing a number, and we're trying to figure out what number this box represents in order to make this statement true. Now, of course, we use fancy names when you're learning algebra, okay? This box is a variable, okay? And this situation here is an equation, all right? Because we got a little equal sign here. So we're trying to solve the equation. So uh, even in the first, second grade, you're solving equations. Now, I have a box here, okay? could be a line or a circle, whatever the case is, just some sort of placeholder for a number. But in algebra, um, we like to use letters as variables. So I could rewrite this uh, problem this way. I could say, okay, x plus 3 is equal to 5. Or I could maybe switch that to another variable like y plus 3 is equal to 5. doesn't make a difference. This y and this box represent a number, okay? So in algebra, the first primary thing that you need to understand is that you're going to see things other than actual numbers. You're going to see a lot of symbols, okay? But what are those symbols, okay? Those symbols just represent, represent other numbers, okay? That's just all it is, okay? So that's the main essence of what algebra, uh, you know, this kind of mathematics is when we have variables, okay, these variables represent numbers, but the process the arithmetic is still in place. Okay, there's nothing mysterious about that. Now here, this particular problem we kind of figured out mentally, but in algebra, we learn kind of like a more direct approach to figure out the number. Now here, of course, we know it is two, and the answer is two, but in algebra, okay, instead of kind of guessing or mentally kind of doing trial by error, we learn techniques that, hey, if you have like a variable, plus let's say a number equals another number, we can just subtract this number away from the variable and we write it in this manner, okay? And we get to our answer y equals two. Well, we knew the answer was two, but we learned kind of like direct procedures or approaches to figure out the answer. But it's nothing um, different than you figuring it out mentally, but we just kind of give you a specific recipe to figure these things out, and that's called solving equations, okay? So this is a big, huge part of learning algebra. And algebra I'm talking about and referencing in this video would be like a pre-algebra or algebra one kind of course. Okay, so again, something like this that we start doing in the first, second grade, or whatever the case is, is nothing more than this same thing in algebra. Okay, now let's take a look at this one here. It's a little bit more challenging. And so even in, you know, your second grade class, you might be like, hmm, how do I do this one? And so, again, you're going to kind of guess, right? You're going to be like, what if I put a 1 in this box? That's 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3. So that's not going to be the answer. So you would go, you would try 1. That wouldn't work. You would try 2. And if I plug in a 2 there, that's 2 times 2. That's 4 plus 1. That's not going to work. And so you just kind of go through this process until you get to 4. Because when I plug in a 4, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1, that's 9. You're like, that's the answer. So you write that on your paper. And, of course, you get all your lovely stars and all those smiley faces. It was so cool being in first, second grade. But definitely um, uh, cooler, I guess, the rewards than, let's say, in high school, right? Because, you know, high school teachers or middle school teachers, they like to use their little red pen and uh, anyways, so good memories in elementary school. All right, so uh, again, here uh, we figured out the right number, okay, to make this statement true. Now I'm using, again, big terms, but it's implicit what's going on. We do this kind of math, or you've done this math, in the el your elementary or primary level mathematics. Now again, this box here, uh, represents a number. It's a variable like x, okay? So I could write this this way to, let's use the variable y, 2 times, okay, we'll replace this box here with something like y plus 1 equals 9. 
Now in algebra, we, well, in terms of multiplication, we don't use this little multiplication operator, this little x. We just put a number right in front of the variable like this, 2y. That means multiplication. So in algebra, when you have something like this, okay, this is the way we write multiplication. So it's just, it's the same thing here, like 2 times 4. We just write it this way. So it's nothing magical about this. So here we have an equation, 2y plus 1 equals 9, okay? It's, uh, it, this is the same. This problem here is the same as this problem here, okay? So you're kind of guessing, okay, what's going, what number would make this true? Again, we learned procedures. This one, this equation is a little bit more involved than this equation. So we learned other procedures here, how to um, solve these equations, okay? So... Now, I'm not going to get into all these procedures because you would obviously have to take an algebra class to, to learn the direct procedures, but they're not hard, okay? It's basically, hey, when you have this pattern, you do these different things, okay? Algebra is not that difficult. Now, there is a lot to learn, okay, for sure, okay? But if you just, you know, learn it step by step by step by step, you'll build up your math skills. But in terms of the basic fundamental concepts, what we're doing here is solving equations, which is, which is a huge part of algebra, learning algebra. And we're, we're, what we're really doing when we're solving equations is we're trying to figure out what numbers, okay, these variables represent that make this statement true, make these equations true, okay? All right, so huge part of algebra is solving equations. Now, let's take a look at something else here. What if I had this problem, okay? So I have, I want to know what this box plus a circle is equal to, okay? So you're thinking, okay, well, box plus a circle, I don't know because there's no numbers in here. But what if I assigned numbers? I say, okay, let's let the box equal to 7 and let's let the circle equal to 3. Well, that's pretty easy now, right? So we just put in a 7 here for the box and we put a 3 for the circle, okay? So 7 plus 3, that is 10, okay? So... This is what we call like evaluating an expression. So let me go back to this thing that I wrote up here, okay? Here I have x and y's. If I said figure this thing out, evaluate this expression for x equals 1 and y equals 2, all I'm going to do is replace all these x's and y's with these particular, uh, these respective values, and then I'm going to do all the number crunching, okay? So this is another big part of algebra called evaluating, all right? So remember, when we're trying to solve for a variable, we're trying to figure out what that variable represents in, in a, an equation, but sometimes we just want to evaluate, plug in uh, numbers and values into um, assign a particular um, number to our variables and then just figure out, do the number crunching, okay? Not difficult, okay, not difficult. All right, now let's talk about uh, the big part of algebra that we spent a lot of time uh, learning about. So I told you about algebra equations. Okay, I gave you a couple basic examples. Now, what we've uh, looked at was something like this. Okay, so I'm giving you equations that are pretty easy to figure out. Like here, I can kind of guess what the value of x might be. Um, that makes this true. But in algebra, we start learning more challenging equations. Okay, we're still trying to figure out what the variable is that makes the statement true, but we need to learn more uh, uh, techniques and we need to identify um, or classify these equations as certain type of equations. So this kind of equation right here is called a, a linear equation. And this type of equation here is called a quadratic equation. So we learn different procedures to solve this type of equation. This type of equation, we're still trying to do the same thing. We're trying to figure out the value of the variable that makes this true. This type of equation is called a radical equation. So we got to learn. It's almost like toolbox. It's like a toolbox, right? Like here, I might need a screwdriver to figure this thing out. Here, I might need a hammer, okay, to figure this thing out. Here, I might need a drill, okay, whatever the case is. Okay, in algebra, what you're doing is you're building up your tool set, okay? But in or basically, all these tools um, or these collection of tools are still trying to uh, get to the same objective, which is to figure out what the variable, what the value of these variables are that make this true. Okay, so here, this particular one right here, of course, is a little bit more involved than these guys. 
because it has two variables. This is called a system, okay? But again, we're going to learn particular tools that can help us solve these uh, equations. Again, we're just trying to figure out what the, what the value of the variables are that represent this. And then, of course, we have another one like this. This is called a rational equation or a uh, proportion. So we're going to classify a lot of different type of uh, equations and learn them. Okay, but the objective is no different than the simple examples that I showed you. Okay, but of course, it looks kind of scary if you're not used to algebra. You're like, hey, what is this and, and whatnot? And that's why you have to, we have to learn things one step at a time. Okay, now, obviously, I'm not covering every single thing here, you know, uh, how to work with positive and negative numbers and order of operations, etc. cetera. Uh, those are kind of like the prerequisite type of things to build up your algebra knowledge. But again, we're talking about algebra and what it represents and kind of like the main purpose of it, okay? Solving equations, finding that what the, uh, the value of that variable is to make these uh, equations true is a huge part of algebra, okay? All right, now another huge thing about algebra, and we're going to wrap it up after this kind of explanation, is that uh, equations actually have a kind of a graphical representation to them, okay, which is kind of cool. So we like to graph things on this grid thing called uh, xy uh, plane or the coordinate plane. So here you can see it's a little x and a y, and this is like we like to plot um, uh, our graphs on uh, this particular plane, okay? It's like a graph paper, all right? So for example, this equation, okay, here, has a respective graph of this line, okay? So I'm looking at the equation, I'm looking at the algebra of it, but this this equation has a graphical representation, and in algebra and in, and in mathematics, we like to look at the graph of things, okay? Graphs tell us a lot, okay? Really tell us a lot. We can study uh, things, you know, more, um, uh, we can analyze things better when we have the graph. So we love graphs in mathematics and in algebra. We learn how to graph something like this equation and put it onto an xy graph or figure out, hey, what this little line here, what is its, what's the equation that represents uh, this line, okay? So this line, for example, has this equation and something like this, um, this is a quadratic equation Okay, has a graph that looks like this little, little U thing. This is called a parabola. So a big part of algebra is learning how to take equations and write their gra graphs. Okay, or uh, here we have a graph. What is the equation that represents that graph? Okay, because graphs have a lot of value uh, in mathematics and in just practical application. Okay, so I would say um, for the most part, Okay, these two big things, solving equations, learning how to graph things, okay, algebraic equations and learning their graphs uh, represents a good chunk of what you're going to learn in algebra. Okay, but again, just remember that the basic essence of algebra is using placeholders, whether it be a box or a variable like this, these placeholders represent uh, numbers. So all those things that you learn you know, or are learning, let's say in the fifth grade, fourth grade, doesn't make a difference, they all apply, okay? In other words, um, arithmetic, if you think about it, I think some uh, students think, oh, when I'm done with uh, learning elementary school, I'm done with that, I don't have to use it anymore, because when I move on to algebra, I'm going to be doing a brand new math. Nope, you're going to be doing the same stuff, in essence, but this time we're going to be using little placeholders that represent numbers, okay? All right, so... If you're not familiar with the algebra, okay, maybe this is an introduction to algebra to you, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, like the way I teach, please consider subscribing. I've literally been on YouTube for 10 plus years at the time of this video. I had literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos, uh, all type of levels of mathematics and organized in various playlists on my channel. Of course, they're all there for you. I can make these videos for your benefit. But um, if you really want to find my best work, go ahead and check out the links in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.